Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight's game is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores, Dragon Shield for all the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. For tonight's game, we are playing CEDH with one of our patrons, Rob. If you have ever wanted to be on an episode, consider signing up to our Mox Pearl tier on Patreon. You get all kinds of Patreon benefits, and you get to be in a video with us. So, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zack piloting the spell-slinging wizard, Kess, Dissonant Mage. This is a reanimator deck that leverages Kess's ability to recur cantrips, interaction, and tutors to cheat huge threats into play. Zack's opening hand contains a miscast, demonic tutor, talisman of dominance, soul ring, and a fiery islet. His London mulligans are a chain of vapor and a faithless looting. Next, we have Ryan playing the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios, Triton Hero. This is also a reanimator list called Razakats. This deck seeks to cheat Razakath as well as other threats into play for huge payoffs. Ryan's opening hand contains a Windswept Teeth, Underground Sea, Notion Thief, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Vampiric Tutor, Windfall, and a Chrome Mox. After that, we have Rob piloting Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This is a mid-range deck that leverages Yuriko's ability to draw cards and pressure life totals. Rob's opening hand contains a Verdant Catacombs, Watery Grave, Muddle the Mixture, Drown in the Lock, Force of Will, Polluted Delta, and a Moth Dust Changeling. Finally, we have Mike playing the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovic's Opus. This is a farm list that is built to take full advantage of Dockside Extortionist, Underworld Breach, and Ad Nauseam. Mike's opening hand contains a Snow-Covered Island, Scalding Tarn, Windswept Heath, Brainstorm, Tainted Pact, Dark Ritual, and Jessica's Will. Without further ado, let's begin this gallant, glowing, gory, grand get-together. Ryan wins the How Many Black Lotuses Can You Fit In Your Mouth Challenge and gets it start us off. Ryan draws for the turn and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Chrome Mox. It resolves and Ryan imprints Avacyn's Pilgrim. Ryan passes the turn. Mike draws for the turn and plays a Scalding Tarn. He shifts the turn to Rob. Rob draws for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, loses a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Rob pays two life and cycles Street Wraith. He casts a Moth Dust Changeling. He shifts the turn to Zack. Zack draws for the turn and plays a Fiery Islet. He taps Fiery Islet to cast Soul Ring. Zack then casts a Talisman of Dominance. With a lightning fast start, Zack passes. During his end step, Ryan casts Vampiric Tutor. He loses two life and fetches up a card onto the top of his library. Ryan draws and plays a Windswept Heath. He casts a Mana Crypt. With Ad Nauseam Mana open and the table lying suspiciously, he passes. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Heath. He cracks his Scalding Tarn, loses a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Mike cracks his Windswept Heath, loses another life, and then fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Mike creates four treasures. Mike passes to Rob. During his end step, Ryan cracks his Windswept Heath, loses a life, and fetches a Bayou onto the battlefield. Rob draws and plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Moth Dust Changeling. Zack declares no blocks, and in response, Rob activates his commander, Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow's ninjutsu ability. He returns Moth Dust Changeling to his hand, and Yuriko hits Zack for one. Yuriko triggers, and Rob reveals a Flusterstorm from the top of his library. His opponents take one damage, and Rob then passes to Zack, discarding to hand size. Zack draws, and taps Fiery Islet to cast Ristic Study. In response, Mike sacrifices two treasures to cast a Tainted Pact. Mike attempts to convince the table that the Tainted Pact is for value and not because he wants to win. The table, not really believing him, lets it resolve. Mike flips the first card, reveals Necropotence, and puts it into his hand, shocking the table. Ristic Study resolves, and Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws and casts a Ristic Study of his own, paying for Zack's Ristic Study. It resolves, and Ryan ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Snow-Covered Island. He sacrifices two treasures and casts Necropotence, paying for both Ristic Studies. Mike activates Necropotence eight times, pays eight life, and exiles eight cards. Mike moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. Mike passes, discarding the hand sides, exiling the discarded cards. Rob draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Yuriko. Zack takes one and Yuriko triggers. Rob reveals Tetsuko Umezawa, Fugitive, from the top of his library, puts it into his hand, and his opponents take two. In his second main phase, Rob casts Tetsuko Umezawa, not paying for either Ristic Study. Ryan and Zack each draw a card. Rob cracks his Polluted Delta, loses a life, and fetches up a Snow-Covered Island onto the battlefield. He passes. Zack draws and starts off by tapping Fiery Islet to cast Wheel of Fortune. In response, Rob casts Flusterstorm, targeting the wheel. Ristic Study triggers and Zack and Ryan draw. Then Flusterstorm counters Wheel of Fortune. 
Zack plays a Blood Crypt, and to play untapped, paying two life. Zack regretfully passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. Ryan cracks Scalding Tarn, loses a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora, paying for Rhystic Study. In response, Zack casts Pyroblast, targeting Mystic Remora. Rhystic Study triggers, and Ryan draws. Mystic Remora gets countered, and Ryan passes. Mike skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He plays an Underground Sea. Mike activates Necropotence four times, paying four life, and exiling four cards. Mike moves to his end step, and puts the exiled cards into his hand. Mike passes, discarding the hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Rob draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Yuriko and Tetsuko. Ryan takes two, and Yuriko triggers. Rob reveals a Reflecting Pool from the top of his library and puts it into his hand. He plays a Reflecting Pool as his land for turn. He recasts Moth Dust Changeling, paying for both Rhystics. He shifts the turn to Zack. Zack draws and casts Arcane Signet, paying for Rhystic Study. Zack ends the turn. During Zack's end step, Ryan casts Notion Thief. Rhystic Study triggers, and Zack draws. It resolves, and the turn passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws and plays a City of Brass. Ryan casts Windfall, not paying for Rhystic Study. The table goes into high alert, and Mike responds by casting Winds of Rebuke, targeting Notion Thief. Notion Thief gets bounced back to Ryan's hand, and each player mills two cards. With Windfall still in the stack, Ryan recasts Notion Thief. Rhystic Study triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Rob casts Mystical Dispute, targeting Windfall. Both Rhystics trigger, and Ryan and Zack draw. Mystical Dispute counters Windfall, and then in response to Notion Thief, Zack casts Brainstorm, paying for Rhystic Study. He draws three and puts two back on top. Notion Thief resolves, and with nothing else, Ryan passes. During his end step, Mike casts Unsubstantiate, targeting his Dockside Extortionist. Both Rhystic Studies trigger, Ryan draws, and Zack declines to draw. Mike skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Rhystic Study triggers, and Ryan draws. In response, Rob casts Force of Will, exiling a blue card and losing a life. Rhystic triggers again, and Ryan draws. Mike activates Necropotence five times, paying five life and exiling five cards. Mike moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. Mike passes, discarding to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Rob draws and casts Scroll Rack, paying for Rhystic Study. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Moth Dust Changeling and Yuriko. Mike takes two and Yuriko triggers twice. In response, Rob activates Scroll Rack. He sets aside three cards and puts the top three cards of his library into his hand. Rob then puts the set aside cards onto the top of his library. Yuriko's triggers resolve, and Rob reveals a misdirection with his opponents taking five, and then muddle the mixture with his opponents taking an additional two. Rob shifts his turn to Zack. Zack draws, and then plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Demonic Tutor, paying for Rhystic Study. Zack fetches up a card into his hand, and then passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws for the turn, and plays a Gaius Cradle. Ryan casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He casts his other commander, Timna the Weaver. Ryan casts Atlanta War Elves. He then casts an Elves of Deep Shadow. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Zack with Notion Thief. Zack takes three, and in his second main phase, Ryan triggers Temna, paying one life and drawing a card. Ryan passes the turn. During his end step, Mike casts a Demonic Consultation. Once again, according to Mike, for the value. Mike tries to argue that he is casting this not to win, but to generate some advantage for himself. The table, not believing him even for a second, laughs at Mike's poor attempt at politics. So in response, Rob casts Fierce Guardianship, targeting Demonic Consultation. Rhystic Study triggers, and Ryan draws. Mike responds to Fierce Guardianship, and casts a Dispel. Rhystic triggers again, and Ryan draws again. Dispel resolves, and counters Fierce Guardianship. With Demonic Consultation still on the stack, Zack responds by casting Miscast, paying for Rhystic Study. In response, Mike pays 2 life, and casts Mental Misstep. Rhystic Study triggers, and Ryan draws. Zack responds by tapping his Fiery Islet to cast Dispel, targeting Demonic Consultation. Rhystic triggers, and Ryan draws again. The stack finally resolves. Dispel counters Demonic Consultation, and Mental Misstep counters Miscast. Ryan then discards the hand size, and the turn goes to Mike. Mike skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He starts off his turn by casting Mnemonic Betrayal. Rhystic Study triggers, and Ryan draws. In response, Ryan casts Fierce Guardianship, countering Mnemonic Betrayal. Mike activates Necropotence two times, paying two life and exiling two cards. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. Mike passes. Rob draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He moves the combat and attacks Ryan with Yuriko, Moth Dust Changeling, and Umizawa. Ryan takes three, and Yuriko triggers twice. In response, Rob activates Scroll Rack, exchanging two cards from his hand onto his library. 
Yuriko's trigger is resolved, and Rob reveals a misdirection with each opponent taking 5, and a model of the mixture with each opponent taking an additional 2. Mike and Ryan die, and Rob follows up by playing Merchant Scroll, paying for Rhystic Study. He fetches up a Pact of Negation into his hand. Rob passes to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack casts Limb Duel's Vault. Zack looks at the top 5, doesn't like what he sees, and then decides to pay a total of 6 life to look a 6 extra times. Zack finds a pile he likes, shuffles his library, and then rearranges accordingly. He draws, and then plays a Flooded Strand. Zack taps his Talisman of Dominance to cast Dak Faden. In response, Rob casts Pact of Negation, paying for Rhystic Study. Pact resolves, and knowing it's over, Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Rob pays for his Pact of Negation. He draws and moves to combat. Rob attacks Zack with all of his creatures and Yuriko triggers twice. In response, Rob taps Mana Confluence to activate Scroll Rack, exchanging two cards in his hand onto his library. Yuriko's trigger resolves, and then Rob reveals a misdirection. Zack takes five, killing him, and Rob wins the game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. Congratulations to Rob on his win. Rob did a great job of applying continuous pressure with his commander and had all the right answers at the right times. Yuriko's ability to generate card advantage and to constantly deal damage is a force to be reckoned with. The most valuable card goes to Scroll Rack. The combination of card selection and synergy with Yuriko allowed Rob to take over the game. The guaranteed damage from his commander was the key to his win. This episode was made possible thanks to Patreon. Do you want to be on an episode of Playing With Power? Rob played with us today as part of our Mox Pearl tier. This tier allows you to play on an episode just like Rob did today. There are all kinds of extra benefits as well, so sign up to our Patreon and get started with benefits right away. If you like this video and wanted to help out, please like and consider subscribing and ringing the bell to be notified of new videos. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Okay, I wanted to give a Patreon shout out to Delph Driz, Brandon Harper, Dustin Maye, Josh Kovach, Baby Jeebus, Mox Rob, Trey Payne, Baskin, Rakeko, Zods, Noah Saldana, Wayan, Isaac Kaja, Spielrahu, Road Grode Medflode, CZ, and Nick. Thanks a lot, you're the best.